Hello everyone and uh, welcome back to Learning with the Pros with Practical Machinist. Uh, I'm Matt Schmelzer here at Northeast Wisconsin Technical College in uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Uh, today we're going to talk about counter boring. Uh, we're going to go over some different tools here and uh, we're going to go over uh, grinding a flat bottom drill. Uh, well, the purpose of counter boring here is just an example on a vice jaw here. Uh, mainly it's just to allow a socket head cap screw to sit flush with the surface of a machined part. Uh, I have a couple of the different tools here, different counter boring options. Uh, we're starting off with our piloted style counter bore tools. Uh, one, we have a, a fixed pilot counter bore tool. This is specific for a type of cap screw that it's used for. Uh, and then we have an uh, interchangeable pilot counter bore tool here. This allows us to change out the pilots with different sizes. Uh, versus the uh, through hole that's in the part and the outside diameter of the counter bore itself. So these tools work really great in a drill press operation where we don't have a fixed vise, so to speak, and it allows the uh, tool to get guided to the through hole in it. Now, when we get into CNC or manual milling machines, another option, of course, is always just a standard end mill. Uh, this allows us to uh, pick different diameters for the size counter bore that we want to use. Uh, works very well. Now some of the limitations we're going to have here of course is how long our tools are and that's going to determine the maximum depth that we can cut with these tools. So somewhat limited uh, depending on the size of the tool. So which brings us to our uh, third option here is a flat bottom drill. Real common it's just a standard uh, twist drill. Uh, what this allows us to do is to uh, basically pick any kind of infinite diameter uh, size counter bore that we need. Uh, this is just a standard jobber drill that uh, we took one that had a dull point on it and we flattened the end and created some geometry on, on the end to uh, cut a flat bottom. So that's the process we're going to go over today in this video is how to sharpen this tool and uh, we'll look at some of the tools we're going to use for this. So here I got just a couple of the basic tools we're going to use. Um, Starting off with just a simple combination square, you can use a precision square also. Because um, we're not putting a point on it, we're basically creating a flat. Uh, we're going to be using just the 90 degree square to ensure that our end is nice and flat. Uh, I also have just a dica marker and a caliper I'm going to use. That's going to allow me to uh, just roughly scribe my center point on the end um, for, to assist in grinding. So we'll go over to the pedestal grinder, I'll get that prepared. Uh, to uh, sharpen our flat bottom. So on the pedestal grinder, real similar to our last video where we uh, ground a 118 degree point on our uh, jobber drill, uh, basically the same safety procedure. I wanna make sure that my guard is within uh, 1 16th of an inch to the wheel. Uh, everything is tight. I do have the safety shield just out of the way just for this video purpose. Um, I got a cup of water here to keep my uh, drill point nice and cool so it doesn't get soft on me. So now I can go ahead, I'm going to turn the grinder on. I'm going to go ahead and just dress my wheel. Uh, I want, again, we want to make sure our wheel is nice and sharp. It's nice and flat. If there's any kind of profile on that wheel from other grinding operations, that's going to affect uh, our point on our drill. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this on. Just make a couple of passes across to dress this wheel. So here I got uh, just a regular jobber drill. This is a half inch diameter tool. And this one here is pretty well damaged. Uh, it's got some notching on the point. So this is a good candidate uh, for a flat bottom drill at this point. So uh, basically what I'm gonna do is just line it up uh, to the wheel and I wanna try and get it as square as possible. We'll verify that with our combination square. And then the cutting lips, I wanna have both cutting lips perfectly horizontal. All right, perfectly horizontal. Then I'll bring it in the wheel and I'll just traverse using the entire surface of the wheel. I'll make a few passes. I'll cool it down. Come back in, make a few more passes. And I'm just removing the drill point at this time. more passes. Again, using the entire surface of the wheel. 
not allowing it to get too hot. And I'm at that point now, I'm going to verify it on my square to make sure I'm flat. And there I'm pretty flat. So this is the first stage of creating the flat bottom drill, is getting a nice perpendicular to the margin flat on the end. So we're ready to go to the next step. So now that I have the end of my drill perfectly flat and perpendicular to the margins, the next step is to create our first cutting angle on the uh, lips of the tool here. Uh, we're looking for between 8 and 10 degrees. Uh, and we're not going to be using the entire surface because, again, we're going to have an angle on each side. So I can't traverse across the wheel at this point anymore. Uh, otherwise, I'll end up grinding the opposite side of the tool. So what I'm going to do is just put a small little reference line in the center, right at the middle of the drill. And that's where I'm going to place the edge of the wheel. So I'm going to start with just using a little bit of dicum. I'm going to just blue up the end. And I'm going to grab my caliper here. And I'm going to set this to one quarter of an inch, 250 thousandths. That's half the diameter of my drill. And I'm just going to very lightly use the end to put a small little line on the point of my drill. So now I have a small little line there. That's just a reference line where I'm going to place the edge of the grinding wheel to create my first cutting lip. All right, so I'm ready to uh, create my first cutting edge. Now again, that line that I placed in the center of my drill is going to be placed right at the edge of the wheel. All right. So again, I want to make sure that my cutting lips are perfectly horizontal again. And I'm going to tip the drill up at about an 8 to 10 degree angle, about 8 to 10 degrees. And then I'm just going to bring the tool right into the wheel, looking at my witness mark. And I'm going to place that right on the edge of the wheel and I'm just going to bring it into the wheel. Now I can see it's starting to grind on the heel of that point. And I'm just gonna bring that all the way up to the cutting edge. I don't wanna remove any more material off the edge because I'm already flat. So I'm just gonna bring that all the way up, again, placing the edge of the wheel on my witness mark. So I'll come back again. Slightly more. We're getting a little bit closer now. Just a little bit more to go. I'm watching for the sparks to just fly over my cutting edge. Right at that point. And now you can see I have my first cutting lip ground. Again, I didn't remove any off the point. I don't want to put an angle on there at all. I want to keep it nice and flat. And now I have my first side done. And I have my 8 to 10 degrees of clearance angle from the cutting lip back. So now I'll repeat that same technique on the opposite side. All right, so now I have both sides ground. Again, with our 8 to 10 degree angle on our cutting lip. So now this, the next step here is to put in our secondary clearance angle. Real similar to the last video where we ground our 118 degree point, we went with about a 25 to 30 degree clearance angle on the heel. All right, so I'm going to go back over that same technique basically on this point here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my grinder on. And again, I want to make sure my cutting lips are horizontal, perfectly horizontal. And then I'm going to tip this up 25 to 30 degrees. And now I don't have to worry about touching the opposite side so I can traverse across the entire wheel for even wear. So there I'm starting to get my 25 to 30 degree angle. I'm going to bring that edge all the way up until it's the same plane as my cutting lip on the opposite side. So I'll go a little bit more. There, we're bringing that edge up a little bit farther, just a little bit more. Maybe just a little bit farther. And 
and I'm going to call that good right there. So there's our secondary clearance angle on the back side of the heel. So I'll go ahead and repeat that on the opposite side. So now I finished my secondary clearance on both sides and you can see we have again our 8 to 10 degree primary clearance angle that's going to create our angle of shear or keenness and then our secondary clearance angle 25 to 30 degrees. So that's all it takes to sharpen a flat bottom drill. Uh, I just want to briefly go over on the uh, whiteboard over here a procedure for doing this. Slightly different than using standard counterbore tools. Um, I'll, I got it drawn up on the board here. Uh, normally how we would do is our through hole would be placed in the part first and then our piloted counterbore tool or end mill at that sake. But when we're using a flat bottom drill, slightly different. Uh, we're going to start off with a counter drill. This will be the diameter of the counter bore we're looking for. And again, because we're using a twist drill to do this, any depth can be accomplished because we're not limited by uh, the design of the tool. We can use extended drills uh, to get whatever length we need. But we need to start off with a counter drill, the counter bore diameter that we're looking for. The second step would be now to place the through hole all the way through the part. And then finally, the third step coming back with our flat bottom drill, that's going to create our flat surface down in the bottom uh, for our cap screw or whatever operation we're looking to do. Uh, again, allowing for a slight chamfer at the bottom from our previous operation. So that's a technique for grinding a flat bottom drill. Some of the uses, again, uh, diameter we're not limited to, the length of the tool, depth of the counter bore, uh, that gives us a lot more options. So I just want to thank you for joining us. Um, if you like this video, hit the subscribe button below. Uh, any comments, let us know any videos you're looking uh, in the future. Um, thanks for joining us.